Hey, what's up guys? We're out here in South Carolina. Um, I'm out here with this in the solar field. We are gonna do a photogrammetry mapping with the DJI Mini 2 using Maps Made Easy app. It's a free application for this kind of thing. And it's not super accurate. I'm just doing it for mainly image purposes. Um, and so as far as like the GPS goes, it's not super important for this video. And so I'm just gonna kind of walk you through how to do the photogrammetry with the Maps Made Easy. And you can do it with something as simple as the DJI Mini 2, um, which is the, the one I'm doing it with today. So this is the app when you open it up. Um, it opens up Apple Maps. And as you can see, I've already, I've already put in the coordinates, but they're really easy to put in. Um, I can actually even just redo this. We just say clear the boundary. So what I do is you just press and hold and it creates a point. You press and hold again, it creates another point. And then if you press the third point down here, it automatically makes this box. And then you can just drag the last point over and then you can adjust it. Obviously I don't wanna fly into the trees over there. So you can just adjust all of these points to make your boundary. So one important note that you should know when you're doing this is you wanna look at your surroundings. And so, um, as you can see out my window here, there's a lot of trees around. And so I wanna be really careful with how far I overlap what I wanna shoot because it's got, the drone has to be above the, the trees because it's automated flight. And so we need to make sure that we know our surroundings. And so, so this little purple dot is the go home point. And so you just wanna put it, that's where I am. Um, and so you just want to put it right there. But all of these grids are the flight path that the drone is going to take. And so there's a bunch of different options you could do if you just slide down right here. Um, there's rotation where you can um, you can rotate. See how the lines are moving. You can rotate one way or the other way. And then something that's good to know is, do you see right here? where the white line turns to gray, that means they're using another battery. So that means the first battery can take us all the way down to here, but then we're gonna need to change batteries for it to finish finish up that spot right there. So that's an important note to take. Um, there's a couple different types of missions. There's normal mission, which is what we're gonna do just cause it's more of a 2D. Um, this is a grid pattern, What you're and you're gonna use that for more of a 3D model and with the free version those are the only two that come with the free version so that's the only ones that we're going to go over right now but overlap um, same way this is just tells you how much the pictures that you take are going to overlap when they're stitched together um, i like to do about 60 60 percent on each of the overlap it helps save on a little bit of battery um, just so i get this all done in one in one go i think i might even do a little bit less but each of, each of these update the speed and the time. And so as you can see, see how the speed is increasing and decreasing as I move that. So it automatically adjusts. I'm not too worried about moving any of the speed toggles, um, but that is how to do it. Now that the iPad is all set up, it's time to turn on the drone. It does its little turn on sequence. Then we go over to the iPad. We need to wait for it to connect. So it's right there. Do you see how it says not connected yet? We have to wait for that drone to connect. So that might take a second. So now that it says fine, it found the DJI Mini 2, so you just click OK. And then over here, you want to click this and say upload. And then this gives us this important sign. Um, click OK. Terrain awareness. That just means if you want to adjust the terrain if you're on a hilly slope. Ours is relatively flat, so we're going to say no. And then we want to say override, I want to override that. And then it's going to sit, ask us to verify the path that it's going to take. 
And so we could just zoom in all those blue lines right here are just the path that it's going to take. I did my best to avoid a lot of these trees right here with the, the path that it's going to take. And then up here, once it's ready to go, you just click start. And then over here, the drone, as you can see, already takes off a little bit. And then it just stays there for a while to get its bearings. But once it gets its bearings, it takes off the rest of the way. And I'm not doing anything, it just goes. So now we wait for it to be done. And the cool part is on the app, you can slide this camera over and it takes a second to load, but then you can see exactly, you can see exactly what the drone is seeing on that little camera. And then it shows us the distance flown, the speed, the time limit, the images that it takes, and everything like that. And then it shows the path, that red arrow is where the drone's at right now. And then it, every time it puts one of those gray dots on there, it shows that it's taking an image. So pretty cool stuff. So we're good halfway through at this point. You can see distance flown is over a mile and a half. Um, speed is staying pretty constant. It's taken 112 images so far and we're over 12 minutes in and you can see it's still kind of chugging along here on the little mini screen. And again, over here, you can see where we're at specifically and the amount of pictures it's taking per one of these passes. And obviously our location is still, our location is still right here. So the drone is done and it's just landing. I have to make sure it lands on the right pad there. But it just lands itself and turns off. And if we go over here, it just says mission has finished. And we just push okay. And we're done with this part. We have to go in to the software a little bit later on to put in all the photos, but it mapped this entire solar field on one battery, which is pretty cool. So in the Maps Made Easy application, to make a new map, we go up to Maps up here, click New. And then we want to make sure that it's a DJI specific workflow since the DJI is what we, the drone that we're working with. So we're going to click use DJI workflow. And then right here, it wants us to give us a sample picture, give them a sample picture so that they know that we are using a DJI. And so when you click on, you just click on files and you just choose any of the pictures that were taken in your in your specific project and it'll take that as it it uh, is a DJI picture so we're just going to choose this random one and then right here it gives us the option to choose um, the ASAP expedited or normal and since we have the free version we're just going to click normal um, it says it's going to do it within 24 hours it's usually pretty it's usually faster than that um, depending on the size, but technically that works just fine usually. So the next is the process. We want to try to process it at a native resolution we can. And then put the name Ballinger is the site name in this case. And then we want to confirm. And approve. And now it's time to put the rest of our pictures in. So the way I like to do this, it's easier for me just organizationally to split my screen, go into the files app and split all of the pictures into separate files. That way I can just select all of them. And then I, I unselect the first couple because those are just the awareness photos that the drone takes when it first takes off. And so I unselect those, but then I just drag and drop the rest of the files uh, into where it lets me upload them. Like so. 
And then it takes a little while for it to do it. Obviously there's a lot of pictures in there, so it's gonna take a little bit to, to put all of those in there. So once those are all loaded up in there, you get this screen where it has all the images. You can kind of scroll through and see all those images, but then we wanna click upload. And this is the process that takes a lot longer. And that's our, our progress bar is right here. And as you can see, it hasn't even started yet. It turns orange when you when it has started the project. And so that is gonna take a while. But um, you can see right here, we have the 227 total images at 0 0.02 gigapixels and for a total of 2.724 gigapixels. And so we were kind of pushing it on this one because the first three gigapixels are free on the free application. And so 2.74 is pretty close. Um, but if you if you go over, it's easy to change to a lower resolution. This is the map that has all of the photos that we took, that a drone took in sequence. And as you can see, we took a lot of photos, 227 of them. Okay, so now we're gonna look at what it looks like when it's complete. And I haven't completed, the, the other one that we just did is still pending, so I'm just gonna show you a different project that I've already completed. Um, right here, there's a shareable user uh, or shareable URL that you can share with people so they can see it. And this just goes through all of the information that is on there. Um, it may be relevant to you or not to look at that, but to look at projects, we want to go up to maps and click complete. Those are our completed maps. And we're going to look at Barry. Barry is a project that I've already done, but what's really cool is it pulls up the maps, uh, Apple Maps again. And so you can actually see your project that you just did that's overlaid on top of the map. Um, because there is, although it's a DJI Mini and it's not extremely accurate when it comes to um, when it comes to GPS, it is it is relatively accurate, so you can kind of see where we are. You would never want to use this for specifics, but it does show you where we are in relativity to other things. And so, as you can see, I mean, you can clearly see in this one what, what the drone took and what was on Apple Maps already, but you can see how much detail is in this. I mean, even the Mini 4 has 4K capabilities, and a lot of these images are are incredibly clear so we covered a lot of area in this mapping and for this particular mapping i was just looking at the vegetation so again i didn't need a whole lot of gps coordinates in it um, but it, it does help to see where it is relative to other things and then something else that's kind of cool if you go up to um, the layers right here, you can click Berry Elevation, and that'll give you kind of a rough estimate on the elevation of what you just took. And so obviously down there, when it's blue, um, it's lower, and when you go up, it's a little more yellow, reddish for a little higher elevation, but it's just something kind of cool that you can do. Again, not extremely accurate, but if you're just using it in the general sense, it works great. So thanks for tuning in guys. Um, I hope you got some value out of this. Again, the application is called Maps Made Easy. Super simple. Um, I, uh, I did an entire solar site in less than an hour uh, with the flying the drone and uploading the pictures. So really awesome program. Um, I plan on using them in the future for these smaller projects with my DJI Mini 2. And if you got any value, again, um, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.